brought me here tonight Woo! with our mutual friend Lihia Villalobos, who's a filmmaker, and you can um, raffle off her films. So, um, and they're amazing. Have you guys ever seen La Misma Luna, yes. Under the Same Moon? Yes, oh my God. It's the most beautiful movie ever. Do you guys, does anybody know about this? I'm gonna talk about this for a quick second. Right, it's the most amazing movie ever. It's about a little boy who like, grows up in Mexico City and his mother migrates to the United States and he, his grandmother dies and so he on his own, and the boy is like what, six years old or seven years old? And he migrates on his own up to Los Angeles to find his mother. It's the most beautiful story you've ever seen. So please, please raffle off, uh, raffle on it. Um, I want to thank Brooke. I want to thank Sean. Um, my name is Joe Hernandez Kolsky. I'm so excited to be here. I've just said the exact same thing Sean just said. Um, I'm half Mexican, half Polish. People still don't know what to do with that information. So they associate me with food. They're always like, wow, you're Polish and Mexican, so what does that give you? A love for kielbasa with a side of frijoles? No, it gives me white privilege with a side of street cred. <laughs> I take my street cred way too seriously. I grew up in Chicago, and I think like a lot of people, yeah! I think like a lot of people, I take it seriously because I'm proud of where I came from. And like a lot of us, I had to leave where I came from to pursue my career goals. And like a lot of us too, also, I probably don't want to go back to my neighborhood. Like as much as I love my neighborhood, like it was not the best of places. Like all joking aside, where I grew up, I could have easily joined a gang if I wasn't so heavily involved in dance, poetry, and musical theater. But if I had joined a gang by now, I'd be running that shit <laughs> differently. We'd have a rival gang member tied to a chair. And he'd be like, what you gonna do with that knife? Cut me? And I'd be like, no. I'm gonna make you a vision board. <laughs> and my sidekick would be like, yeah, Joe, teach this motherfucker about creative visualization. <laughs> oh shit, it's the cops. Boo! Put down the Oprah magazines and motivational posters, Kolsky. <laughs> Swear to God, ever since this kid took over the gangs, the city's turned into one huge dance battle. <laughs> and there would be this huge gang standoff. And I would step forward. <laughs> you think you run these streets, son? But we about to settle this like men. It's gotten worse. 
It all started with Kathy Restis. We were both three years old, naked and bathing together outside, playing together. We were inseparable. She was my very first best friend until I left Chicago for South Bend from the age of four to seven and where I fell in love with Miss Simmons, my teacher in kindergarten. My problem was getting worse. Enamored with Miss Simmons by day, playing catch with my neighbors, Wendy and Jill by night. And as a kid, I've always had close friendships with boys from Dusty to Gary to my cousin Joe, but they were never enough, you know? I've always been addicted, addicted to that female spirit and I just wish I could do something about it. Why did my mom have to be such a beautiful woman? Why did my parents raise me to be such a responsible older brother to my sister? Why were lessons on being a gentleman so important? Opening doors, walking on the outside of the sidewalk, walking with the woman, not in front of her? Why can't I just cross that thin line between chivalry and chauvinism? <laughs> Why did the girls have to write in my eighth grade yearbook, stay sweet and cute? Why? Why can't I just be an asshole? Why can't I be the guy who gets the woman in the one night stand with no strings attached? Why can't I be the bad boy who's dark and mysterious? Leave women wondering, what did I do wrong as I exit their life forever? <laughs> but I must accept responsibility. That is the first step towards recovery, isn't it? I am a feminist. I must first accept that before I can begin my life anew. Dating the jiggy women. <laughs> Passing legislation attempting to control women's bodies. But before I enter this misogynistic utopia, I am unable to understand how it's possible that those who gave birth to us, all of us, are forced to deal with catcalls and whistles on a daily basis, let alone the glass ceilings and lower wages. Women constitute half the world's population, perform nearly two-thirds of its daily working operations, receive one-tenth of the world's income, and own less than one one-hundredth of the world's property? Dear God, have we sacrificed our greatest gift to this planet for spokesmodels? In today's society, is it really the less a woman has in her head, the lighter she is for climbing? I challenge all men to think. Would you want to change places for one day? We wouldn't have the strength. So for Sojourner Truth, yeah. Olive Schreiner, yeah. Rosa Parks, Indira Gandhi, Gloria Steinem, Michelle Obama, Jill Scott, and the girl from the Corona ad who's really hot. <laughs> I take one more step towards recovery by declaring I am a feminist. What are you?